Working through grief. Due to the traumatic nature and circumstances surrounding Michael's death during heart surgery, I felt that I not only wanted to express my feelings, but that, but that I needed to tell my story about what happened. As such, there are now three sections to this project. The first, entitled Emptiness, Stillness and Loneliness, uses photography in a very mindful, reflective and contemplative way. The second set of photos are reenactment photos. These are where I have worked with an actress to tell my story. And thirdly, the third set are self-portraits. I now felt ready to put myself in the picture, literally. These photos represent the emptiness, stillness and loneliness which I still have. The subdued light and the element of water seem to represent an empty void. It is a powerful image. The tree branch is floating, lifeless and still. There remains a part of me which feels this emptiness and loneliness. The stillness of the water over the cobbles is an effective and powerful metaphor. I'd like to read a quote from Howard Zare from his book called The Little Book of Contemplative Photography. To photograph in this spirit is a matter of opening ourselves to receiving. Like meditation or contemplation, photography as receiving requires us to cultivate an attitude of receptivity and openness to what might be given to us. Such photography is more like a meditation or a spiritual discipline than a hunt. And lastly, the empty bench. This is where we used to sit. This is... There is no one there now, not us, not him. I stare at it and feel the loss of a part of myself as I take the picture. So this whole process has been about making something beautiful out of this traumatic event, as well as coming to terms with all that I have lost. The American photographer Robert Adams described landscape photography as being a bit like a mirror of what goes on inside you. And what he means is the things we notice will always mirror or reflect, if you like, our own inner maps of the world. And that is different for each and every one of us. Both these quotes from Howard Zare and Robert Adams resonated with me during this time. This next set of photos are the reenactment photos. They are scenes depicting what I went through over the 24 hours while Michael was in hospital undergoing heart surgery. I wanted to recreate some scenes which I felt were particularly distressing in order to tell my story. I had thought of casting myself in each scene, but decided that I needed some emotional distance from the events, so I decided to work with my friend the actress Anna Lanyon. This first image shows me in a state of shock, as I had got in the car. I had just heard that the operation was not going well. I wanted to go to the hospital, but I turned back. In this scene, I wanted to create this sense of drama. I photographed her through the windscreen, which meant I got the reflections of the clouds in the sky. All through this collaboration, as I was so involved in creating these images, I was somehow able to distance myself from it until I looked at the images later on and found that this was exactly how it felt, almost like being in a horror film. In fact, all these images are a bit like film stills. At home again, here I have just heard that he didn't survive the operation. I wanted to show the feeling of desperation and anxiety, which I think she has got really well. More waiting. I was waiting for my mother to come home and give her the bad news. There were three elements which I needed to portray in this image. Firstly, the unbelievable truth that he didn't make it. Secondly, where the hell is my mother? And thirdly, simply waiting. So I was very conscious of using the colour red to emphasise the feeling of anxiety and the composition feeling dwarfed and alone by the large painting behind. The next morning, still in a state of shock, having had no sleep. My body felt as though it had been hit by a thunderbolt. 
In this scene, I want to create the feeling of devastation and loss. The music you see here are photocopies of Michael's music in his own handwriting. They are strewn on the bed as if to say, this is all that is left. In this scene, I'm holding Michael's house key. And here, I want to create the feeling of being shut out, locked out of his life. The key no longer works. In this last scene, the boy represents my nephew. Here, he is a child actor. My nephew was 13 at the time. He sat with me and comforted me. This image is exactly how it felt. The tenderness, love and caring from a young boy brought tears to my eyes. This was certainly a very powerful process and I was struck by Anna's ability to express my feelings so clearly and be able to collaborate in this way with mutual empathy. I felt that by telling my story in this way, I became like an observer or a witness to the events. It also put me in a position of power, taking on the role of director, which was far more liberating than feeling utterly helpless. During the sessions with Anna, there were moments where I felt that terrible sadness and pain again, and it was at those moments that I knew the picture had worked. I could then stand back from it. It became an emotional release and has provided me with some cathartic healing in being able to move forward from my loss of 20 years. Coming through grief, transforming pain into art. I would like to open this section with a quote from Cristina Nunez. She says, the secret is to look inside, suffer from it, face it and photograph it. And this is what I attempted to do. I went on to embark on a series of self-portraits called Coming Through Grief. I now felt ready to put myself in the picture and push through the pain that I've been carrying. These photos are an attempt to capture a real moment in time and are not reenactments. This is the first image from the series. I decided to photograph myself in a very distressed state. This is how I felt at that moment when I took the picture. I call this picture anguish. It was shocking at first, but it took the pain from inside of me and put it outside. It has externalised it. This photo I have called Perhaps I Can. I began to take myself out into nature as a way of checking in with myself, seeing where I am at and accepting different parts of myself. This photo I made is around the feeling of uncertainty. Again, this is an attempt to capture a real feeling. It is about being in the present moment and trying to see myself as if the camera isn't there. It is also about acceptance, accepting that it's okay to feel uncertain about the future. Determination. I'd like to read a quote from Neil Gibson from his book on therapeutic photography. He says, self-portraiture through photography allows us to see how others see us and allows us time to reflect on how we project ourselves. Being able to reflect in this way allows us to see different possibilities and change our perceptions of ourselves. Similarly, when working with clients' self-portraits, seeing images of themselves offers the possibility of change and acceptance. This process has been therapeutic in that I'm able to view myself from different vantage points whereby at the same time strengthening my inner self.